All right, folks, it's been tough sledding for dividend payers. Even those with high-paying dividends, uh, they've always consistently paid, or even high dividends, it's been tough. So the so-called dividend aristocrats, for instance, uh, these are companies that hike every year, at least for 25 years or longer. You can see here, uh, Noble, right, aristocrats, hell of a 2021. But since then, let's face it, relatively flat in its holding pattern. Now, many are wondering if it's simply because of the increased competition from higher yielding bonds, money markets, or maybe just maybe a story is being told that was always in plain sight. Let me bring in the best when it comes to dividends, uh, the Bonson Group Managing Director, David Bonson. David? Uh, this is from the Journal of Corporate Finance. I saw this over the weekend. I thought it was absolutely fi fa fa uh, fascinating on a couple of reasons, for a couple of reasons. One, they say, okay, one of the reasons they think it's okay to hibernate dividends, not pay for two, three, four years, or whatever, several quarters in a row, is that you can actually take money uh, it, because paying some of these companies, it would help them from reducing uh, underinvestment. So money you would put in a dividend, maybe you could put back into the business. The problem with that, and there's plenty of studies that bear this out, and this is what I've dedicated my career to, there's very few things in finance I feel more passionately about than this. Companies that hold on to money that belongs to shareholders end up blowing it up. Bad decisions are made when companies do not properly reward shareholders. Now, there's a, a counter to that, which is that you need enough money to run your business. You need CapEx, you need R&D, you need marketing, you need future support. Right. That's why most companies don't pay out 100% of profits in dividends. Right. But there needs to be a, to a dual objective in corporate America to reward shareholders for the risks they're taking, at the same time reinvest in the business. The, the report says dividend hibernation, companies that leave their dividends unchanged for, I think it's seven quarters in a row uh -huh. and they continue uh, the second year after that the, their, their outperformance the earnings come in a percent higher than expected two years uh, two years 2.2 percent three years 1.6 percent five years 2.4 percent that holding that money actually sees outperformance in earnings but this was not uh, saying hibernation of holding the money they were talking about not raising it in, not, in, not in hiking the middle the of the year right. that's what i meant and most companies in america we have 33 companies in our portfolio towers are all dividend growers 30 out of 33 hold their dividend flat throughout the year and one quarter a year raise the dividend. So they would count as hibernating dividends there. But I think it's more because they've learned to level out and even out their earnings, their right. free cash flow. Companies that go up and down quarter by quarter are very rare in America. The, the, arist the aristocrats, like one of my beasts with the aristocrats is that you can raise your dividend by a penny. It could go from 250 to That's 251 right. and you could say, hey, for the 27th year in a row we raised a dividend. That's a little specious. Here they're also saying there's a communication aspect to this, right? Communication of private information, a company's information about earnings and investment to the less informed investor, uh, outsider, right? So maybe it's more of a, of a ploy, a marketing ploy than anything else. Well, let's look at a company like McDonald's that has grown the dividend every year since 1967 and is up 70,000% 70, since going public. <laughs> Those are real numbers. Coca-Cola, some of these aristocrats that are right. not playing the game of raising one penny. Right. They are legitimate annual growth. We want to see 5 to 8% per year okay. on average. What those companies have done is grow their earnings enough to do that. Bad companies don't grow earnings enough to grow the dividend 5 to 8% a year. Good companies that grow their earnings that well then have to make a decision what they're going to do with them. Right. That's all dividend growth is about. Right. What do you do with your earnings? Do you hold on to it so management can go do bad M&A? Or do you return it to shareholders who took a risk by investing in the company? Uh, there's evidence all over the place that management aligned with shareholders grow their dividend. And these are just some of your recent dividend ideas here. Uh, Blue Isle Capital, Truist and Verizon. Uh, these yields are magnificent, particularly Verizon. Do you, do, what kind of risk do you take on principle for something like to get this kind of a yield? With, with something like Verizon, there is risk because they put so much into CapEx. It's one of the most capital intensive companies we own as they were building out 5G. That CapEx is starting to come down. The free cash flow is starting to grow. The stock is up about 15% in the last couple of weeks here. Um, Verizon, unlike AT&T, avoided going out and buying Time Warner and, and DirecTV and these other expensive mergers. Right. That's why we like Verizon. Verizon. Blue Owl is a new company. We've owned Truist and Verizon for a while. Blue Owl is here on Wall Street, private credit. A lot of banks aren't lending. These other types of entities are. They're very good underwriters, good profit margins. Companies love right now accessing capital right. markets with companies like Blue Owl. All right. Attractive. Four, four and a quarter, 6.7, 7.4. Yes, sir. I like a man who brings, who brings all his receipts and some more. We'll be checking on these. Thanks, David. Appreciate Thanks, you. Charles.